If you've looked at really any Python code recently, there's a good chance you've seen the line if dunder name equals dunder main in it. And if you don't know what that means, then this video is perfect for you. The idea of this clause is to conditionally check whether certain code should be executed in a certain context so that its main purpose therein is to prevent script logic running when you're importing a module. And this is nice because it allows you to write a file as both a script and a module at the same time. Of course, there are other considerations to keep in mind. And while this is generally considered good practice, like all good practices, there are good places to use it and there are bad places to use it. And we'll be talking about both in this video. So what is it and how is it used? Let's find out. So let's say you had this module, uh, hello.py, and it had this hello world function in it, just a really simple function that prints hello world. If you wanted to be able to uh, run this file as a script and have it print hello world, then you could just simply call hello world on the top level like that. And if you were to run pi hello.py, you would get hello world back. And that works perfectly fine. But if you were to have this, say, script.py, which is a script, and then you wanted to import this function into this script for whatever reason, and you were to call it again, if we run py script.py, we'll see that it's being run twice instead of just once. And that's because when you import this, so when you import it from here, it will load this module hello.py and it will run everything in this file. So it will run this to then create the function to be able to import. But then it will also run this as well because it's still on the top level. And that will actually execute the function and then it will print hello world to the terminal. And then when you call it from here, it will print hello world to the terminal again. And this is where our if name equals main uh, clause or line of code or whatever you want to call it comes in. So if you go back to the hello world.py, we can simply say if name equals main. And then if we tab that in, we can now run py hello uh, py, not oi, hello.py, and it runs just fine. But now if you're on the script.py, it will only execute it once. And this is possible because of how Python names all of its modules in the runtime. So each module has a dunder name. And this is available at the top level of any function, uh, sorry, of any module. So this is always globally available. And every module's name is the name of the file itself. So be in this case, it'd be hello or script, for example. However, when you actually run a Python script, the name of that module or file is given dunder name. So if I were to print, say, uh, oops, dunder name here in hello.py. If you run it from here, we see that the name is dunder main and we can go, oh, okay, if this is true, then we're running this as a script and then we can do it like this. However, if we run py script.py, the dunder name is hello instead. And if we do print uh, name, uh, I guess like two or something just to differentiate it we have this one now as done domain. So this one is being run as the script because we can see it's done domain. And because we're importing hello, uh, this file's name is now hello. And that is how we can use this done name to determine if we're running this file directly or not. And then we can conditionally run a logic only if it is. So when would you actually want to use this to prevent code from running? Um, well, it's often good practice just to have this here anyway. It's a more clear entry point, I guess. So you can see, okay, well, everything in here is designed to be run as a script and everything in here is either designed to be run in a module or it's just the setup for it. So this is a good way of indicating that one, this file is a script and two, that this is the endpoint. The second place we want to use it, as I um, mentioned in the introduction, was if you wanted to use a module as, or if you wanted to use a Python file as both a module and a script. And this is particularly pertinent if you have any sort of user input, or if you have a command line interface, like in this case, there's some Python modules, I'm not 100% sure if this is quite how they do it, but some Python modules like SQLite3 and UUID have just really simple command line interfaces um, in their modules. And this hex module here, 
has this generate hex that can quite easily be used in other files but then you have this command line utility for if you just want to generate a hex number so we can do pi hex dot pi and then we could say digits um 10 and we can get oh i actually need to <laughs> select the correct environment so i'm so used to pi env and i've recently switched to uv after making another video i need to work out how to make that do that by default uh, but if we now run that again we get this um hex value here of 10 digits and we can run it with three digits and that's fine and then we can also uh, import it into this script so if we get rid of this for a second if we do from hex import generate hex if we generate hex and say digits equals five for example and then we run this script here uh, we get the raw no we don't we haven't printed this that's why that's happening and now we get this uh, generated hex but we haven't printed out twice and we haven't invoked any sort of command line interface where you wouldn't want to do this is where it became in any way overly complex so this feeds a lot into uh, when you create a library do you create it as a single file or do you create it uh, with a directory structure the answer relies really on the complexity if something is very simple to implement you probably want to keep it as simple as possible. You don't want to be overcomplicating it and make thing, uh, uh, making things difficult to find. In the same way, in, uh, in situations as simple as this, you probably don't need to create this whole other module or this whole other package that can handle the command and interface for you. If it was more than just a single module and it was this whole package, uh, or maybe this file had a whole load of functions, then you might want to create a separate command line interface package or module uh, to be able to handle that just to uh, to keep everything separated and to keep the separation of concerns alive so really as with most things it is up to the user but make sure if it's uh, sufficiently complex that you handle it properly the other little bonus thing that i want to show you is the done domain file within a package so if you create a package here just called cabra and then we move these two modules into it. We can create an init.py to tell this this is a package. And now we've got to do carbra.hello and carbra.hex. Whoopsie daisies. And just run that again and make sure I haven't messed it up. Okay, good, I haven't. We can create a Dunder main in here. And this file is kind of a module, not a module, but a package level entry point. And it is literally the done domain. So this will always have a done domain. Uh, so if we were to, I don't know, from uh, hex import generate hex. Actually, if we do, just do something simple. If we do if name equals main, we can do that here too. And we just do print uh, subscribe to Carver. There we go. That's your engagement YouTube. Uh, <laughs> and now we could do, if we run the Carver. Uh, package using dash m so if you run it as a module it then executes what is in this done domain.py and if we don't have this done domain.py so if we just move it out it will error saying that uh, it cannot be directly executed but this allows it to be run as a module and you can import different things from the package if you want so you can import hex and you can have that here we can have some sort of fancy banner like I sort does or that I do in analytics. This is only really tangentially related to the main point of the video, but I did want to show it off uh, because it is cool and it does run along the same sort of lines. If you like this video, then make sure to leave a like to let me know. And if you have any comments or questions, feel free to put them in the comment section below as well. If you want to know about all the other ways that Python is awesome, you can check out the Python is awesome playlist linked in the end cards. And I'll see you in the next one for whatever we do next.